So it was the end of 2020. Everybody's been through the pandemic. It's been hard on everybody. Nobody's the exception. Um, but this was an especially low period in my life. Really dark thoughts, suicide ideation, something that I've struggled with my whole life had been very prevalent during this time. And I had just gotten to a place in life where I knew I could not keep living the way that I was. The way that I was going through the motions at work, which was stressing me out. Um, I had lost some weight, but I had plateaued, and so I was not able to lose any more weight beyond that place where I'd gotten stuck. And I just found myself stuck in relationships that did not make sense to me and that kept me stressed out, overwhelmed, and anxious, and I needed something different. And so I made a choice. I made a choice to do the work on me. And that looked like setting a lot of boundaries and doing some reflection and a lot of work on myself. And getting to the other side of that, I realized how lonely the journey had felt. And I didn't want anybody else to have to experience healing alone. Because while it is an individual process, it's something that you can do with somebody else to help you along the way so that you don't feel like you're doing it all by yourself. Because no man is an island. And so at the end of doing all the work and wanting to be the bridge between where people are and where they want to be, Healing is Work Coaching was born because healing is work. <laughs> So me growing up um, as a kid, I'm going back to when I was growing up in Knoxville, Tennessee, where I'm from, and I am 10 years old and I am helping to raise my sister who's two years younger or eight years younger than me. Um, and so at this point in life, I am a child. I have taken on a lot more responsibility than is that of a child. And I learned and embodied codependency, which is having unbalanced relationships that require you to self-sacrifice. And so that was like my upbringing situation. And then fast forward to mid thirties, I find myself wrapping up uh, the worst romantic relationship of my life that I'd ever been in. It was with a narcissist. And it felt very familiar to childhood, but I had not put the two pieces together until after I had gone through my own healing journey and done the work behind the scenes internally. And when I did that, it was crazy because I stepped back and I was like, yo, this is like my family dynamic on repeat in all relationships. And then I started putting the pieces together of how patterns continue to show up no matter, <laughs> no matter how you try to outrun them. Um, you can walk away from a different person or a different job or whatever the case may be. But ultimately, if you have not done the work to break whatever patterns are on repeat in your life, they're always going to show up in your life again, be it in the job that you're at with a coworker, with your family, with strangers on the street. You can't outrun you. You got to take time to break those patterns. <laughs> So I'm going to take you to November 2020, or as my friend whose birthday is in November likes to call it, Zovember. Uh, but, you know, we're still in the midst of the pandemic, very much so, but vacation needed to happen. So went down to New Orleans and in the midst of trying to figure out what direction I was going to take next, because my life could not continue to be on the trajectory it was on, I had dabbled in the woo before, but I went and saw um, a tarot reader in New Orleans. And the first thing that she said to me is that there was light shining on me and me sharing my message with the world, me on stage speaking to people and sharing my stories. And at the time when she said this, it sounded crazy to me because I have always been the woman behind the scenes that gets everything done and you don't need to see me to know that the job was well done. But fast forward, after I've done all the work that I've done on myself, I wanted to, um, you know, bring everything forward. And it's crazy because when she said that, it didn't really mean anything to me. But the thing that she did say that I took with me was the importance of me meditating to be able to tap into the gifts that I have to bring forth to the world. 
And so at the very least, I figured I could do that. And so I did 10 minutes of meditation daily. And it's a practice that I began back at the end of 2020 and carrying it forward. And the thing is, is that now that I've gotten into the practice of meditation, that led me into a space of being able to do my own healing journey, my own healing work which led me into being able to start breaking down the generational trauma that has been experienced in my family so that it does not have to continue forward after me. Um, and that led me to building my own coaching business because at the end of the day, there are times when people say something that plant a seed and mindset is everything. And so having someone believe in you and taking it to the next step, putting those actions in it, any, you can accomplish anything. Mindset is everything. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. And I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now, for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I wanna invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right, when, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you maybe in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you. I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't want to get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience. It's like, a, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say, apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again real soon. See you out. Hmm. So many things that I've learned that would help my 21 year old self. And if I had to narrow it down to three, it's going to be rest, inner child work and boundaries. And I've got a couple of stories. Um, so first off, I take myself back in my mind to when I was a 10 year old and I always excelled in school, always had good grades. And my mom, she was a teacher's assistant. So she would bring home additional homework. Even though I'm getting straight A's, she brought additional homework home for me because she was very much of the mind being raised as a single, uh, by a single mother, very much of the mind that I had to work 10 times as hard to get to where my white counterparts got in life. And that was very much ingrained in me and that became a part of my identity. And what I have learned is that hustle culture is, it's real, like people do it, but it's a damn lie. Like it's not sustainable and it does not guarantee your success. So rest is important. And then the other two things would be the inner child work and the boundaries. 
So back to um, the early part of 2020, or excuse me, 2021, I had made a hard decision to do the hardest boundary work of my life. Uh, I had set boundaries with my mother. Uh, I love my mother, I always have, but you know, I have to live my life for me. And so I set firm boundaries. She was not on board with them, like people aren't, because boundaries require you to do things different and then you're showing up different and people want the same old you that you've always been, but that can't be what you keep giving them. And so I set the boundaries. There was a period of time in which she did not speak to me and that was really hard. It was really hurtful. I did a lot of ugly crying. Um, and that's when I realized that inner child work was gonna be the thing that helped bridge that gap between boundaries with my mom and getting me to where I knew I deserved to be. Um, and so I set those boundaries with her and I did inner child work. And fast forward to the end of 2021, she stayed with me for a week at my house. And no, our relationship is not perfect, but it's on track to being better than it's been. So let me take you to um, a trip that I went on in June of 2021. I'd gone to Hilton Head with some friends for a vacation. And while there, I was vacationing with several friends that I'd known for over a decade from college and always had a good time getting together with these women. It was always a good vibe. Um, but everyone seemed to notice that there was something different about me. I had done the healing work. I had meditated regularly. I had boundaries in place, a regular self-care practice, and using the word no as a complete sentence. And it felt good. And my friends were just like, yo, like your whole vibe is different and we love it. I had singing bowls. It was a good time. Anyway, um, ultimately, that was the period in time in which I allowed myself to dream bigger than I ever had before. I had made a statement that I wanted to earn six figures. And immediately, like after it left my mouth, I said, no, 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 actually, I wanna make seven figures. And to allow myself to say something so big without even knowing how it's gonna come to be, but still believe it was so empowering for me. And so there's a running joke from that trip because I said, when I make seven figures, I am gonna get a yacht and it's gonna be called Seven Figure Bitches. And everybody's invited to be on that thing. Um, and so, yeah, what's next for me is my goal is to be Oprah adjacent. Oprah has been a role model of mine my entire life. She's a philanthropist. She gives back to the world. She cares about people. She helps people improve their mental health and just their overall well-being. She educates people and she's a beautiful soul. And so my goal, Oprah adjacent. That looks like being an author. That looks like being an international speaker. That's me having a podcast that's monetized. Right now I have a podcast, the Healing Corner Podcast, and it's on its way up. Um, and so wherever this journey is ready to take me, I am leaning in and going and playing full out because I know that it's gonna be insanely excellent. And I look forward to it. <laughs> I don't know if you are familiar with Bonnaroo, but Bonnaroo is this huge music festival that happens in Manchester, Tennessee every June, I think it is. I decided to go to Bonnaroo June 2022. Um, I had never camped before, never roughed it before, but wanted an experience like I hadn't had before. Um, and so while out there, you know, the vibe is good. I'm getting the hang of things. This is my first ever anything like this. And this is a period in time in which I was working with my first client. And she reached out to me through text and she had told me that she had just gotten the job that she had been hoping to get. Um, and the thing about this is that, you know, we had only been working together for a month and a half, but for her to send me that text, I was just like, I knew what we were doing mattered but to see it like actually play out, it touched me so deeply to the point that I actually was out at Bonnaroo Crime. <laughs> and I'm sure that I looked crazy um, and I didn't care. And after I gathered myself, I called my client and I, I cried like she probably wasn't crying, but I continued crying and I just told her 
I was like, you're doing the work, you're doing the damn thing, and it's only up from here. And it's something to be able to give somebody that belief in themselves, to empower themselves, to go through the motions, keep fighting the good fight, going forward, and seeing the results of the work that they've put into a thing come to fruition. And so to watch somebody be able to transform themselves, to come back to themselves, because you've always been in there. You just allowed society and culture and family drama and life to cover up that little kid inside of you that wants to bust out and live a fun, funky, free life. And so the reason I get up every day is because I want everybody to come back home to themselves and to stop doing shit out of obligation. The thing that I have enjoyed the most about the making of an entrepreneur, um, I don't know if it's just one thing, but if I had to pick a thing, and I'm still gonna talk longer, uh, it would be that I have been challenged in a way in which I've never been challenged before to, I've invested in myself before, that's not an issue, but to invest in myself and to like, take the, the assignment, which was to know what the stories were gonna be and to put it all together. Like I've never done anything like this. And it was a very uh, awesome experience. It pushed me completely out of my comfort zone. This is my first business trip as a coach. And I just look forward to a lot more travel, um, spreading my message and doing what I do best. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docu-series. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I want to take that and I want to release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. Now, if that's you and you someone that's want to get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you want to have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. The Making of an entrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless.